Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our today's brand session. Today, we proudly present you Mr. Pierre Ibisch, who is Professor for Nature Conservation at the German University in Eberswalde. It's the University for Sustainable Development. He's going to talk about the current developments and the future perspectives of biosphere reserves. And the research question that Pierre is going to answer us today is um, UNESCO Biosphere Reserves in the VUCA world. Do they need a wake up call? Thank you, Pierre, for being with us, and we're looking forward to your lecture. Yeah, good afternoon. Thanks a lot for the introduction and for having me today. Uh, as it was mentioned, uh, I'm based in northeastern Germany, close to the Polish border, close to one of the biosphere reserves in, in Germany, uh, Schaufheide Korin Biosphere Reserves. And uh, here in Eberswalde, we have for a couple of years now started to work more intensively with this world network of the UNESCO Biosphere Reserves. We have established a Biosphere Reserves Institute, uh, having several partners on board, such as the Michael Zucco Foundation, which was uh, yeah, very important in, in stimulating this idea, um, and the national nature landscapes uh, of, of Germany and uh, several other partners. And uh, the Spicefear Reserves Institute has uh, been launched in 2019. We are running a master's course on Spicefear Reserves Management. We have a graduate program. And recently, we organized uh, the first international conference on science and research in, for, and with UNESCO Biosphere Reserves. So this would be one of our functions, as far as we understand. This is our offer uh, to support UNESCO Biosphere Reserves by um, yeah, providing training, education, uh, opportunities, uh, doing research, and uh, yeah, facilitating scientific activities in biosphere reserves. At this conference, I gave a talk, at which I'm now uh, well delivering here in a very summarized and uh, condensed form, which uh, is uh, yeah related to the situation of the UNESCO biosphere reserves. Wonderful places, right? The last great places, some of them. Uh, vast ecosystems, it's um, yeah, this network, a unique opportunity for collaboration, reaching out to partners in, in countries where often well, it's, it's difficult to, to work uh, with, but yeah, it has proven to be really a functional network, people coming together from science, from uh, yeah, the, the practical side and, and uh, also decision makers, uh, UNESCO mice reserves, as we know, like these, well, laboratories, are they? These places where we um, preserve nature and culture, mm, where ancient cultures, well, uh, developed and uh, where also currently, like we have these opportunities for witnessing um, in some places, at least, humans and nature in coexistence, harmony, question mark, uh, we, we have to see. And uh, these spice reserves have been very important in many countries also struggling for sustainable development in countries struggling for existence. And in this case, one uh, sad example we have to mention here is Ukraine, where we have been working a lot with spice reserves and uh, where we know right now we are looking at this country uh, for yeah, the, the war and, and uh, yeah, the fact that all the ordinary activities, the life has come to an halt and we have uh, a, a tragedy over there. And this is already related to, to the topic of my talk where we have to be honest. And if we look around, it's not just great places and, and uh, well, people living in harmony with nature. We have a planet which is full. We're living in the full world, uh, inequality, uh, poverty, and uh, yeah, a asymmetric 
situation, socioeconomically speaking, politically um, speaking, and this asymmetry also well, relates to our relationship to nature. So if we look at our achievement that as humans, we have now built more mass, more material than uh, we have living biomass on earth. So we, we can start to ask some questions and we have these wonderful cities and uh, yeah, seem to be come free and ever more uh, yeah, liberated from, um, well, the ecosystems. We do not need them anymore. Well, we know maybe this is not, not true. We have only, yeah, this, this uh, simultaneity of the unsimultaneous, how I would like to call it, uh, different worlds in, in one and uh, a world which is ever more difficult to understand and where we live in this age of great acceleration uh, and we are on, on a road to, well, to what? No perfect storm, well, road to development. This is the idea. And uh, then we know like what are the consequences of, of our current development model? Uh, well, virtually being at war with nature as well as uh, uh, the general secretary of uh, the United Nations has uh, explained it. Um, so maybe this is or was the third uh, world war and uh, where we are pr still proud of all these great revolutions that allowed our current level of, of uh, yeah, living and, and consumption and, and so on. But then we see this is coming at the cost of uh, wild life at the cost of functional ecosystems and where we ever more start to understand, well, at the end of the day, we are this dependent component of the ecosystem and we will suffer as well. We uh, get a bill now presented as um, we are hitting the limits to growth that at the end of the day, yes, they, they exist. So we have uh, an acceleration, we have a complexification of problems that start to interact. Uh, I don't have to explain climate change, uh, extreme events, ever more wildfire, sea level rise, uh, and then the scenarios are, are grim. I mean, that we now know that we are very close to well, reaching this 1.5 degrees level of warming in comparison to the pre-industrial uh, situation. And with, again, an unbalanced, unequal uh, warming and uh, different regions and ecosystems being affected more than others. On top of all the conventional uh, threats, no? biodiversity loss is, is said, uh, and, and, and stated a lot, and, and we have all the studies that quantify it, but uh, what is more difficult to understand, like how the different stressors work together and we have cumulative effects, uh, climate change working together with um, habitat loss and, and other problems. And we look at historical, uh, in a historical situation and like where scientists have to say, yes, we cause a severe impact uh, to, to biota, which may stay for millions of, of years to come. In this context, good to have mice reserves uh, and uh, have these uh, international meetings and strategic plans and action plans, such as the Lima Action Plan, um, where we have, well, the goals, which are okay, conserve biodiversity, restore ecosystem support, sustainable development, and so on and so forth. But uh, is, is all this still realistic? Uh, is the agenda of bias reserves and UNESCO and of course other multilateral agreements, is it sufficiently critical, transformative and, and combative? And uh, here comes again, like also the well, uh, negative side of, of the UNESCO World Network of Vice Reserves, these areas are not islands in a, in, in, or not like on another planet. They are embedded in, in this critical situation. And wherever we look, we see this degradation also affecting these places where 
where people are supposed to explore pathways to sustainable development. So losing forests as, as well, uh, primary forests, we can jump from one continent to the other. We have ever better tools for in investigating this uh, or the remote sensing, allowing for a real-time assessment uh, of, of this degradation. And it's not only a problem of the global south, but also in the global north. Yeah, I give one example of, of Germany in the mice reserves, things are happening which are not good, such as the uh, collapse of uh, spruce plantations here in the Harz Mountains and uh, then practices uh, that are problematic and which I would not want to see in mice reserves, uh, such as salvage logging and, and clear cutting. And then, yeah, we have actually here developed quite a few projects also using mice reserves as a bridge, as a tool for, for connecting with people working also across borders and, and boundaries, including Korea, for example. Uh, but then comes the moment where like, yeah, some, some rockets are launched and uh, situations get worse and we see a world of conflicts and sanctions. And uh, yeah, the question then is, are our mice reserves really um, prepared for, for the task, which is, yes, proposing the, the positive the way forward, uh, sustainable development, whilst they suffer from this perfect storm, they themselves are, are supposed to, to combat. And uh, in navigating in the storm is, is uh, yeah, challenge, uh, a challenge in, in this world, which the Pentagon actually started to call uh, VUCA world. This is quite a few years ago now, like after the new world order collapse of, collapse of Soviet Union and so on, we noticed you know, that uh, the world and the world systems are becoming more volatile, uh, unexpected fluctuations, ever more extremes, and this all, all this is related to uncertain scenarios and, and uh, non-knowledge becoming ever more important blind spots. Uh, and yeah, this driven, of course, by the complexity of the systems, but also the complexity uh, caused by the interaction of problems and, and, and crisis. And on top of, of all that, for us scientists, it becomes ever more difficult to well, conclude the same, no? And, and worse, even if we reach out to, to the wider society. So we have many interpretations of the current situation. Ambiguity is growing as well. And then this means we have more difficulties, difficulties to agree on, on solutions. And then ever more risks pop up. And uh, this, well, uh, has been important, like in our research, uh, understanding risks on, on a local level, but also driven by uh, global problems. So we feel protected area management, mice reserves management cannot be uh, conducted as uh, in, in earlier times. And also in other spheres, even in economy, uh, well, the risks are recognized as, as a key factor in, in understanding what we have to do now uh, facing these, these uncertain complex uh, problems. So World Economic Forum publishes this uh, report on, on risks every year. And uh, it's interesting, this is survey based, even the economists see uh, the, the green risks here in, in this graph, uh, ecological environmental risks becoming ever more important. and still uh, like surprising risks are overlooked, are neglected. No, this was the assessment of this year, of course, uh, uh, not mentioning a war that uh, yeah, could happen and that now is happening and changing uh, any and everything. So we have this the zoo of, of uh, yeah, risks such as the black swans and the gray rhinos, no, some risks, yes, we know they are there. Others, we're not talking about them. The elephant in the room, black swans, uh, which are representing the risks that uh, have a huge impact, but uh, that are hardly uh, visible and really improbable. And so the question is, and, and this is something we also suggest to investigate much more actively and honestly, 
uh, if if the bias reserves as role models are, are uh, yeah prepared for for the situation. VUCA world, uh, a world which is hot, flat, and crowded. We have the great acceleration, and uh, we hit the limits to to growth. So, are we good at at dealing with risks? Are we doing uh, um, yeah a good bird watching, let's say, uh, looking out for, for black uh, swans as well, not only the, the beautiful birds we all love, um, and are the price reserves maybe often administrated such as, uh, well, as, as protected areas, but not really uh, fit for, for purpose? Are they giving us a sufficient uh, inspiration and motivation for, for this work? And well, we can ask the question to mice reserves, but we have to ask the questions also to ourselves, to, to researchers, to the science. Um, no, are we sufficiently critical about all this outspoken? Uh, is our research sufficiently transfer-oriented, transformative? Um, is all this grounded in, in, in values? What are our values? And how do we overcome uh, ambiguity? Uh, in a world where values are not not necessarily shared everywhere, so uh, this is very brief. Uh, I, I was uh, supposed to talk only a few minutes here. I'm sorry for coming up with more questions than answers, but I, I feel we really have to get to grips with these uh, enormous challenges and and uh, risks. And I still feel optimistic. I feel it's good to have this world network but uh, we cannot uh, continue working as uh, yeah, we did yesterday. Thank you very much. We'll ensure nature conservation in the 21st century. Be part of the new four semester part-time master program. Carinthia University of Applied Sciences.